Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to Bookshelf Tour number whatever. I don't know what we're on. Let me check I'm in focus as well. Sometimes the beard throws it out of focus. Without further ado, let's get to the next book. So in our last episode, we finished up with Peter James. So that brings us on to Rosemary Jarsky, The Funniest Thing You Never Said, The Ultimate Collection of Humorous Quotations. As you can guess from the title, this is a book of quotations. In case you're wondering, this is tie-dye ink on my hand, by the way. Don't be alarmed. Um... Let me flick in at random. Let's see. We have a quote here from Hen Henry Young Henny Youngman. I told my doctor it hurts when I do this. He said, don't do that. Rob Bryden. My uncle had diabetes before it became all the rage. Aaron Copeland. Listening to the Fifth Symphony of Ralph Vaughan Williams is like staring at a cow for 45 minutes. George Bernard Shaw. Brahms' German Requiem made me wish I was dead. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Collection of humorous quotes. It is what it is. Next up we have Michael Israel Jarvis. He is an indie author. Friend of mine, uh, I, I actually used to be his book manager back in the book trope days, so we used to have the same publisher. This is Gravedigger. This is like a spade and sorcery fantasy epic. It's almost like YA in terms of the age of the characters, but I would say it's more adult fantasy, really. Cracking book. This is what was the one that uh, first introduced me to his work. Have it signed here. To Dane, enjoy. Michael Israel Jarvis, 6th of January 2013. Very cool. Okay, then I have here Land Rising, which is book number one in the Maker's Bloodline. The main thing I remember, I mean, this is all fantasy, really, but the main thing I remember about this was a big battle scene that was very well written. Uh, yeah, if you like your epic fantasy. It's actually only the first one out in that series, though, so if you're one of those people who waits for the series to be completed... Maybe read uh, Gravedigger, I guess. Because here we have Osric Fingerbone and the Boy Murderer. Uh, and this is number one in a series. Basically, it's set in an alternate version of London in the 1800s. And it follows a boy murderer. I've actually just picked up book number two. And that's going to be my indie reads. Todd and Danes. Indie read along book. Alright, here we have For the Love of I. Inspirational Poetry by Patsy Jowo. Jowo. Somebody commented on one of my uh, bookshelf tours being like, um, you know, I'm really sorry, but every time you read poetry out on your bookshelf tours, it sounds terrible. Yeah, I, I was sent quite a lot of terrible poetry. I think this might be one of those books. Let's read uh, Mummies Alive. I love my mummy, so why did she leave me? The truth of the matter is she's a lot closer, nearer than I think, closer than it seems. So where is mummy then? She is in my blood. She floods my heart. My mind and my thoughts. If I listen close enough, I can hear her within. Now it is plain to see. I have not lost mummy, for she is always with me. I carry her inside me through all of my days, in every single way. She shapes my body, drapes my thoughts and words, for she is in my DNA, the essence of all I display. So thank you, mummy, for the gift of life and being that part of me that keeps me alive. That reminded me of the Doctor Who episode with the kids in the gas masks who'd go like, they would wander around and go like, Are you my mummy? Here we have K.W. Jeta, 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 The Mandalorian Armor. So this is book one in the Bounty Hunter Wars. Anyway, this just tells you how Boba Fett got his armor. But obviously, it was then made non-canon, I guess. Because the way he got his armor here didn't have very much to do with Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones or whatever it was. Published in 1998. Good book, though. I enjoyed it. Especially if you like the character of Boba Fett. Okay, here we have Factory Farming by Andrew Johnson. This is just a very dry read about factory farming, really. Here is a pig in a... Looks like a, gest is that a gestation crate, I think. Um, and you can see, look, the bars on either side. That's how much space they have to move in, in factory farm setups. So it's all very sad. Uh... But still very interesting nonetheless. And I picked this up for research for my novel Meat. And this along with a number of other books is why I am now beacon. Here we have A Dragon by Mike Johnson. Um, I don't remember this one but it seems to be like a like a detective novel-y kind of thing. I, I vaguely remember actually... I remember like the overall impression I got which was that it was an okay read. Like it felt pretty indie but it didn't. it wasn't bad indie from what I remember. Uh, I, I still don't know if I'd recommend it over all the other books I have in this tour, though, you know? Alright, here we have Diana Wynne-Jones, Howl's Moving Castle. There's not really much for me to say about this. I saw the movie first, read the book, 
I enjoyed both. Uh, I don't know, maybe I only like the movie more because of nostalgia. I mean, I've only read the book once and probably seen the movie twice. So, I'm not the biggest Howl fan or whatever. They're both very different as well, but in, the, in their own ways, you know? Here we have The Accidental Dictionary by Paul Anthony Jones. The remarkable twists and turns of English words. So this is all about, uh, so it says here, uh, Buxom used to mean obedient. A cloud was a rock. Raunchy originally meant dirty. So it's all about the words that we use and where they came from. So fathom originally meant to embrace. Explode originally meant to jeer a performer off stage. So it's pretty cool. Just sort of examines the history of words and their evolution over time. Okay, next up we have Graham Jones, Clickology, what works in online shopping and how your business can use consumer psychology to succeed. Actually very good this. This is basically, uh, I read this, I mean, I don't know how up to date it is now, but I, re I read this a little while ago when I was working in marketing and some of the stuff I picked up on in this. So it's 2014, so it's reasonably recent. And just some of the different studies that have been done and like practical experiments and stuff to the point at which like, for example, there are experiments into if you play different types of music at a wine section in a supermarket, it affects how much people spend. So they don't buy more wine, but if you play classical music as opposed to pop music, they buy more expensive wine. So the whole book is about how, you know, re well, online marketers can take advantage of that basically. Particularly like e-commerce and, you know, web store owners and stuff. So here we have Liz Riley Jones, the Hiraeth trilogy. So we have Hiraeth, A Burden Back, which is book two. Hiraeth, The Lost Cold, which is book three. And Hiraeth, A Mark Mark, which is book one. Uh, these are actually really good. I really enjoyed these. Um, they're basically young adult fantasy, but uh, with like a Celtic twist. So it's all set with these wars that are going on between um, like between the Druids uh, of it's like the Welsh Druids and the Scottish Druids and the Irish Druids all have this like complex political interplay and yeah I enjoyed it here we have October Jones text from dog literally he gets text from his dog so for example my face is wrinkly you're a bulldog buy me some moisturizer you're a bulldog I look old you've always looked old your face looks like a pile of towels your face looks like a donkey scrotum there we go. Yeah. Probably seen uh, text from dog if you've spent large amounts of time on the internet as I have. Here we have Lucy Jones, Foxes on Earth, a story of love and loathing in modern Britain. This book is all non-fiction. It's about foxes, basically, why we love them and why we hate them. It kind of takes into consideration things like, uh, you know, the health and safety of having them in big cities where they're rooting around in garbage and stuff. But at the same time, things like fox hunting and all of that. Very interesting read, and, you know, I like foxes. Here we have James Joyce's Dubliners, and uh, this is Pulp the Classics. The, this this whole series does it uh, with a bunch of different classic novels, and they're really cool, because they, they do, obviously, you can see, they take, like, the pulp style. Even the pages, the pages are yellowed. It just looks like a pulp novel, but it's Dubliners by James Joyce, and I enjoyed it. I think I enjoyed it more because it was that edition as well. All right, here we have It's Been Emotional by Vinnie Jones, My Story. So this is Vinnie Jones' autobiography. You may have seen him in films. He was in Snatch, Lockstock, The Mean Machine. I think he was in that. What, what, what was the jail one? He played football in jail for one of them. Yeah, he's... Uh, well, he was an ex-footballer. He's actually also famous because there's this photo of him with Paul Gascoigne. Gaza, who actually... I read Gaza's autobiography as well, and it, that was mentioned in a previous tour. But in about 1993, there was a football match, and Gaza reached behind... No, sorry, it was the other way around. Vinnie Jones was standing in front, he reached behind and grabbed Gaza's nuts, and like squeezed like that. And there's a photo of it, because it was obviously a televised match. But I think they were mates. Here we have Dungeons and Dragons by Rogers, Dominguez, Wanon, and DeVito. This was just, I think, free with one of Becca's loot crates. So I decided I would read it. Eh. Not, not particularly good. And I used to be a uh, big Dungeons and Dragons fan as well. Here we have Only Love Can Bring You Peace by Simon Joyner. These are his selected lyrics. He's actually signed it to me as well. I picked this up at one of his gigs and it was his last copy left. He's um, a hugely influential singer-songwriter really. So it says here, some of my favourite musicians 
uh, referenced him. So Connor Oberst from Bright Eyes loved Simon Joyner. Gillian Welsh, uh, so these two have both blurbed it as well, both like folk musicians. And uh, John Peel as well, the English DJ. Uh, one of Simon Joyner's albums was one of only two albums in his 30 year history or whatever that he played back to back and the other one was Bob Dylan those were only two albums that he played throughout you know back to back over the radio okay then here we have SH Duke SH Duca or Jucker I don't know how to pronounce it. we have Libra a Silver Ships novel Meridian a Silver Ships novel and the Silver Ships which is the first Silver Ships novel so I have to be careful about how much I tell you about this because obviously it's a series, it's a sci-fi series. Uh, it's had some, I remember when I looked at the reviews for it, some people didn't like it because the alien races and whatnot and the humans all work together against one other alien race like it wasn't just all out space war or whatever. But I actually liked that, I liked it, it was quite hopeful I think. And very well written, a good sci-fi novel. Here we have Franz Kafka, The Metamorphosis and Other Stories, Dover Thrift Editions. Yeah, The Metamorphosis is one of his most famous ones. In fact, I think it only has two or three other stories. It also has uh, The Judgment in the Penal Colony, A Country Doctor and A Report to an Academy. And uh, yeah, Kafka. I like Kafka. Must read some more of him. Okay, here we have The One That Got Away by Annabel Cantaria. Everyone has one, an X you still think about. Everyone has one, an advanced review copy of a generic thriller. I don't remember it, I'm sorry. Judy Finnegan from Richard and Judy said it was utterly compelling. And obviously, Heat magazine said it was a clever, tense thriller. Uh, yeah, I don't really remember it. It's just a, a knockoff of all the others, isn't it? Okay, then we have Catherine Caputa, Women Who Brand, How Smart Women Promote Themselves and Get Ahead. This was one that was offered to me through my book blog. I was reading a lot of, sort of non-fiction worky books at the time. It's pretty good. I mean, especially, I, I should imagine even more so if you're a woman. But really, you know, we should all be thinking about personal branding in this day and age. And that's kind of why I got it. I thought, you know, it's aimed at women. But I'm sure there's stuff that I can take from it too. Here we have Jackie Kay, 10 Poems of Kindness. Uh, selected, uh, so it's selected and introduced by Jackie Kay. This is... Um, in support of Felix's campaign of kindness, so basically this young lad who sadly committed suicide, and I believe all the profits from this go to that. It brings together old and new, so we have Jackie Kay, who I think was the Scottish Macar. Uh, we have Sylvia Plath, Kate Tempest, so we have a nice little range here, and I believe Felix's mother or father wrote in it as well. Very touching. That was another one I got sent for free. Helen Keeling Marston, 200 very short stories. So these are just all flash stories. I'll see. Here is a, a short one for you as a sample. The small plane crashed badly, but the pilot didn't seem to care. As a spoiled child, he knew that his parents would just buy him another one. I've actually sort of started writing flash myself, except mine's usually micro flash, you know, just a couple, couple of lines at most. But uh, yeah, that was inspired by that this book, so I, I, I enjoyed it. Here we have You Should Have Left by Daniel Kaleman. This is just like a creepy ghost novella, I guess. I was given a copy of this by one of the other members when I was on the Shadow Panel for the Young Writer of the Year Award. Devoured it in a day or so. I actually really like the format of this book. Um, yeah, it was good. Alright, we're on the last bits now. So here we have... Hugh Kellett, Glitch and Glitch USA. I believe these are um, literally just using, yeah, it uses autocorrect to tell things. So, uh, for example, it's talking about the, uh, the civil war fought between the considerates and the unkind. You know, and there was obviously a uh, abrasive luncheon and uh, ultra grand. And uh, this was when the song The Startled Spanked Banker came out. Probably wouldn't recommend them, to be honest, unless you can get them cheap, but... Here is Pharaoh. Here we have Overcoming Anxiety by Helen Kennelly. So this is a self-help guide using cognitive behavioural therapy techni techniques. And, uh, I mean, I've never found CBT to be particularly useful for me. And uh, also... Um, uh, reading books hasn't really helped me to come to terms with it or to deal with it or anything. I'm going to tilt us up. But um, this was one of the better ones that I did read. It's obviously a little bit outdated. You can kind of see here. Uh, when was it published? 1997, so it's not that old. But um, yeah, it was alright. It was interesting to get to know more about CBT and how it works and whatnot. 
here we now have my stack of Jack Kerouac. So we have a book of haikus, which is actually grammatically incorrect because the plural of haiku is haiku. But I'm going to read you some of Jack Kerouac's haiku. The word handicapped sliding over snow on a newspaper. I had a kigo word, which is when you have uh, uh, like a, something that relates to the time of year or back to nature. Run over by my lawnmower, waiting for me to leave the frog. Done this the wrong way around. Pretend I didn't tell you about that one. Here we have Please Hear What I'm Not Saying, which is compiled and edited by Isabel Kenyon. It's actually got a poem by a friend of mine called po uh, Katie Lewington in there as well. We'll get to Katie Lewington, JKL, yep, soon. <laughs> but I will, uh, I'm will. i going to read you Katie's poem from this collection, if I can find it. She was near the end. The idea here is you can fill in your own titles. It's uh, modern, contemporary poetry, which I quite like. A lot of free verse stuff. And um, also it gets goes from dark at the beginning to light towards the end so it's like a gradual shift you know and also all, all proceeds of this go to uh, mind as well which is a mental health charity so here's silver lining by katie lewington i stop writing and my life falls apart as if that smashing of a wrecking ball into a building splinters of me fly out and everybody runs for cover because they don't want to be burdened with my pain but you have to get through that pain to fully appreciate that whatever physical pressures are placed upon your body your mind can remain clear the strength is in your beliefs and you have to steer the ship of your destiny and now i start to write storm clouds part and i can see chinks of light appearing yeah. Jack Kerouac, Book of Haiku. We'll just skip over that. Next up we have Jack Kerouac, Book of Sketches. So these are, uh, oh my goodness, it's got like beveled, beveled edges, is that what you'd call it? Uh, it's actually all like free verse poetry, I would say. In fact, there's no obvious way for me to even, to even like, to, from where to start but it says here uh, in 1951 it was suggested to Jack Kerouac by his friend Ed White that he sketch in the streets like a painter but with words so this is the result pretty cool little book pretty quirky Jack Kerouac departed angels the lost paintings so Kerouac used to be a painter as well and a drawer and whatnot um, here you go, here's one of his paintings the silly eye on oil so again if you're a Kerouac fan you probably want to want to check this out very cool we have a Desolation Angels. Uh, this is, begins on a mountain top with uh, Kerouac basically works as I think like a fire lookout or something like that. So he goes on a, starts off at the mountain top and then he goes off for a bit of travelling. He's basically in a similar vein to On the Road and his other books, you know. In fact, I'm not even going to tell you too much about all of them because there's quite a few here. But we have Dr. Sachs. Uh, so it says here, Jack Kerouac called Dr. Sachs the enigmatic figure who haunted his boyhood imagination. My ghost, personal angel, private shadow, secret lover. And this is an account of his childhood, really. We have Lonesome Traveller. This is actually the one I believe that the Penguin Mini Modern Kerouac took an excerpt from. We have On the Road. My copy's looking a bit the worse for wear now, but uh, I only read it once, so it's just been moved and stuff. Uh, here we have the Subterraneans and Pick. The Town and the City, which is, I believe, his first novel. Uh, and, and it was before he really found his style as a writer. I actually really enjoyed it. He kind of set out to write the great American novel. Uh, and then we have Vanity of Deleuze. So Jack Deleuze is another one of like his aliases for himself. Uh, one of my favourite ones, actually, uh, Vanity of Deleuze. And then we have Wake Up, which is uh, his biography of the founder of Buddhism. Never published in his lifetime. Next up we have Dave Kirpin. Dave Kirpin is a marketeer. This is a really interesting story actually. He used to run an agency called Likeable Media in New York. His wife Carrie now now runs it. But he married Carrie at like a sponsored wedding almost. So a lot of the clients and stuff sponsored it. Actually one of his clients was 1-800-Flowers which helped. But um, they had it at half time in the middle of a baseball game I think as well. And then... That gave everybody, like, all the sponsors the greatest amount of airtime and all this stuff, you see. He was also a reality TV show contestant at one point. But anyway, here are his two books. Likeable Social Media and Likeable Business. So Likeable Business is how to run a likeable business. Likeable Social Media is all about social media marketing. They go hand in hand. He also has another one, but I can't remember what it's called. 
but I, I, I'm going to have to check it out at some point. Okay, and then we have Ken Casey, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Obviously a classic. Just read it, really. Uh, yeah, you've probably either already read it or you have no interest in it, I guess. But, uh, yeah, Ken Casey. And finally, Michael Katkar, Tortured Love. I don't remember this one at all. I don't even know how I, why I read it. It must have been good enough to keep me going because it's a novel, not a poetry collection. A novel of death, life, suffering. Yeah. And on a bit of a downer because I don't remember it, but it does have a nice cover. So, that is it for this bookshelf tour. Uh, in my next one, it's going to be one author only. And, uh, I, oh, I wonder who it could be. Who, who would be organised alphabetically by surname after somebody whose surname is Katkar, K-H. So anyway, on that note, thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.